Welcome everyone, Super Rugby 2018 preview. Today we're looking tonight at the Sharks. Uh, what's in store for them for the coming season? Uh, second year for coach Robert Dupree. Um, steady season last year, I think if we're looking where they're at at the moment. They were good, they were a couple of points away from knocking off the Lions, but it didn't, it didn't end up happening for them. Uh, middling season and definitely room for them to, to push on in uh, 2018. How's the squad looking? A uh, few names have, have come and a few names have gone. So if we're looking at who's left, uh, Adrianza has gone to France. Um, he'll be missed in the front row, I think, as will uh, Etienne Oosthuizen in the second row. Uh, he, was, he was a solid performer for them last season. Uh, and Dungani is retired. It's probably about about the right time for him. Um, Satoli has left. reinach has gone over to England. He was he's always an X Factor player. If you ever played fantasy rugby, he was always a good halfback to have in your fantasy rugby team, just because of his uh, his running ability. And um, yeah, perhaps most sadly, uh, Pat Lambie has finally pulled the trigger and gone over to France. Feel sorry for Pat. I feel like he was a guy, I remember seeing him when he first came on the scene, he was going to be the next big thing, but man, could that guy get an injury at just the wrong time. Um, yeah, it just never quite panned out for him. So I guess it's about time for him to take some of that, that European money, which he's, you know, contract which he's earned. But yeah, it is a pity to see him uh, out of Durban for the year. So, who's left? Um, a lot of names here on the board. The coach, uh, not happy, um, generally, but also not happy to to cut down to like a standard 38-man squad has gone with a full 45-man squad. So, some names quite familiar, uh, some names less so. So let's have a look at who's here uh, in the front row. Van der Merwe, Maria, Ralapelle, Van Vuren, Oosthausen, Dutoy, Heldenhuis, Machunu, Mtoarira, Schumann, Maya, and Majola. A few new names there for me, to be fair. Um, Van der Merwe's come over from the Lions. He is an explosive style pro um, hooker, so I think if he's coming off the bench, he will definitely have an impact. Um, Maria... Getting into his mid-twenties now, if he's going to make a move to be a starting hooker, I think this is the season for him to do it. Um, whereas Ralapelli is at the other end of his career, um, he's going to be kind of fighting off both those two guys above him to see if he can still get a place in the matchday squad. Um, Van Vuren's only young at 22, I think he will be struggling to get minutes. Um, Oosthausen in the props is out for the season, but he's still been named in the squad, I guess for feel-good reasons. Um, but yeah, he's got a knee injury, so he's not going to play. Um, Dutoy has kind of been shifted uh, from the loose head to the tight head to cover Connie's absence. So he's spending this time retraining um, to try and get get the art of being a tight head prop from being a loose head prop. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes with that shift. Um, Heldon Hayes has come in. He's a bit of a journeyman, so he will no doubt play some some experienced benched role. Um, Matrunu, I don't know much about him. He's 20, apparently quite a powerful runner, so we'll see if he gets any game time at all. Uh, these other guys, the Beast, well, he'll be the Beast. I know there's been some talk that he's kind of at 32 or 31 um, last season in a bit of a decline, but I still think he's got what it takes to, to perform at Super Rugby level without a problem. Um, Schumann, he'll probably be fighting it out for the position behind the beast, I imagine, with um, with Maya. And um, Majola is another young guy coming through. He's only 22, played South African under 20s. So we'll see if he gets any time. Uh, locks and loose forwards. So we got a few names, which I will no doubt pronounce poorly. Um, both are Levy's, Andrews, Koglenberg, Drotze. Uh, the two Dupria twins, Van der Valt, Ntembu, Paul, Daniel, Vermeulen, and Voslu. So both are his captain for the season. Uh, apparently he uh, captained the Curry Cups squad 
uh, in the season just gone and did commendably. So we'll see if that form as captain and form as a player carries on into the Super Rugby season. Uh, he's a good line-out jumper, so I don't see any reason for him not to be starting in most games. Uh, Levy's as well. He's a um, strong, athletic kind of uh, lock and also good in the line-out. So, yeah, those guys both look pretty odds-on to be uh, starters. Andrews has, I think he's been with the squad a couple of years. He's struggled a bit. I don't remember seeing him a heck of a lot. Uh, Koglenberg, from what I've read, has just come back from um, some time playing in the Pro 12 or Pro 14 um, with an Italian side and did not exactly set the world on fire. So he has come to, I guess, try and reinvigorate his career a bit back with the Sharks. Um, Drotz will probably get a few minutes uh, behind the guys above him, I would imagine. Uh, the Dupria twins, they'll do what they do. They're still young, they're good work rate, good tacklers, good ball runners. So I think, especially with your dad as the coach, they're pretty much shoo-ins to either be starting or on the bench. Um, Van der Vault is your defensive grinding machine. I think he'll be... A sure thing to be making a lot of tackles, as he always does. Uh, and Ntembu has been kind of a stalwart for the Sharks for a few years now at number 8. So expect to see him there as well. These other guys, I think, expect to see less. Um, Paul has come from the Kings. Uh, he's kind of a lock loose forward, so I don't know how... I mean, it sounds like a prime candidate for the bench. Um, I don't think Keegan Daniel played at all last season. Um... And, yeah, Vermeulen, probably another bench player. Uh, Voslu has come up from the Curry Cup team, so I haven't seen him play. I'll be interested to see if he also gets some game time. So, you look at that and you think, pretty good. I wouldn't be complaining if that was if that was my squad. Some, some pretty good players there. Maybe a little bit of uh, lack of depth uh, in the second row. If like both uh, was to get injured, that may be a problem. And if Dutoy struggles at tight head, uh, there could be problems at scrum time. But other than those, I think pretty solid looking. Uh, for the backs, Schroeder, Klassen's right, Williams, Bosch, Robert Dupria Jr. And Garth April. So I think Schroeder intention, in, first intentions would have been the first choice number nine. But I think the other day in the uh, warm-up game, well, preseason game, he got an injury. No reports out as uh, I'm recording this uh, as to the seriousness of it, but apparently not looking great. So that could be problems for them. Just brought him over from the Kings last year where he did pretty admirably. Um, yeah, pity for him to start the season that way. Uh, Klaassens, you know, he was kind of... Rhinox back up last season, played pretty well when he was on, but he is getting old, getting on. So I would be surprised to see him starting and playing like 70 minutes every week. He's at that stage in his career where you expect him to inject something rather than start, I would have thought. Um, Wright and Williams, two young guys coming through. I think Wright's played over in France a bit, and Williams has... Uh, come from the under 21 so they're both still in their early 20s might get some time especially if Schroeder is out for a while 10 will be an interesting choice for the coach to choose I mean Bosch looked good when he was playing 10 and 15 last season he's kind of got that Barrett style play where he is just he can put on the afterburners and just he can go leave guys for dead um, maybe not as defensively sound as Dupria, who's come over from the Stormers. So it might just depend on who they're playing as to who gets chosen. It might be um, just based on performance. He might have an idea of who's going to start. Again, it doesn't hurt to have your dad as the coach. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if Bosch doesn't get in at 10, I would imagine he'll be somewhere, probably 15, um, but we will see. April, I don't think he would start 10. I think he will be a utility player 10 if if something happens to one of the guys above him. 
Uh, other guys in the back, so Arm, Esther Hayes and Ward, Blewett, Daisel, Lowe, Van Vaek, Nkosi, Mpimpi, Mvovo, Smith, Zas and Winnar. Um, the midfield will be interesting because you look at this list and you see quite a few utility style players, so not a lot of specialists. Um, Arm looked good in his games last season. I believe he was rewarded with first Springboks cap, so that just shows you the season he had last year was was good. Um, Esther Hazen will definitely get some minutes. What position he'll be playing could be one of many. Uh, Ward, again, he's a decent direct kind of running player. Um, like multiple positions, blow it wing or in the midfield. Um, Daisel's the Namibian uh, center. I think he will probably be lower down in the pecking order, but you never know. Um, Lowe is a big looking ball runner, but he got very little time last season, so it might be given his age. The coach is looking for him to develop a bit more before throwing him in the deep end. Uh, Van Vake scored a lot of tries last season, but if you look at them back, I've watched a few of the highlights just before preparing this. Um, a lot of it was he was just finishing off a team try. It wasn't that much the case of he's individually brilliant. So like um, Arika Ioane playing at a pretty average Blues team sometimes just does something out of nowhere. A lot of his tries that he scored were the teams set him up and he just finishes off, which is not to say it's not a good thing. You still got to be in the right place, right time, catch the ball, run the right line, but it's more of a team thing than an individual brilliance thing. Uh, individual brilliance, you're looking more at guys like Nkosi and Mpimpi. Um, Nkosi's quick and powerful. Mpimpi is just, he's quick. He was the highest scoring a South African um, try scorer anyway for Super Rugby last season with the Kings. So it says a lot about what he can do in terms of finishing. And Volvo's getting on. He's 31. Um, how much game time he gets, especially with Mpimpi coming in, although he can play fullback. So there's definitely a lot of options here. I mean, one thing about him naming the 45-man squad is you can see there's a fair bit of depth in places. Um, Rhino Smith, another good player. He's got a hell of a step, so you wouldn't be upset having him starting at fullback. He is more of a specialist fullback, so uh, more than a utility. Uh, Zas has come over from the Stormers, and he looked good. So there's there's talent to burn back here for the Sharks this year. And Winar is the one guy who um, had me scratching my head a bit when I read it. Um, fullback, fly half, so... We'll see. I don't expect to see him starting any games anytime soon. So pretty good. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see which guys end up in which positions. But there's certainly good names to choose from. Not a bad to, position to be in if you are Rob Dupree Senior going into the season. Um... Despite having all these names, I must say they are not the easiest team on the eye. Uh, you look... I mean, they can have really pretty games. Like, I remember they had one of their games against the Lions was kind of a try fest And then they had their game against the Rebels, which was a tryless draw. And it was just... Two red cards were the highlight of the game. It was not very super rugby um but i mean the coach has come out and said that he said we don't have to run the ball so we're going to win south african style i mean he, he had a pretty decent record especially at home for most of the start of the season anyway i think a few blips at the end but they had a really good home record um yeah, the least run meters of any team in Super Rugby last year tells you a bit about the way the Sharks were playing. Kicked, I think, second only to the Highlanders. So lots of kicking, not that much ball running, and a lot of penalty goals. Yes, so that's his style of, of game. He wants to kick them when they're on, you know, kick them when you've got the opportunity, and yeah, don't. Don't go for the, the try, apparently. Um, 
I mean, I suppose if, if that works, it's going to work. I, mean, I think if they can be a bit harder at the breakdown, you've got you've got some talent here. If they can uh, fewer turnovers uh, at the breakdown, they'll be able to play territory and get the get penalty goals and drop goals as well. They took more drop goals. I think double the next team in terms of drop goals attempted. So, yeah, if it's going to work more power to him well, he's i think he said he wants to play winning rugby no matter how you win it, i guess um yeah so whether i'm going to get up at three in the morning to watch all the sharks games next or this season mm, we'll see strength of schedule for the sharks middle of the road they've got the eighth hardest strength of schedule so pretty much in the middle um, they managed to avoid the reds and the crusaders so the reds are a team on the rebuild you probably wouldn't mind playing them um, the crusaders are the defending champions so avoiding them you'll be pretty chuffed so kind of a 50 50 draw there in terms of the draw itself the sharks are another team that gets a little bit disadvantaged by, well at least I think, um, by having the buy really early on. So they play the Lions away in the first week and then you've got a buy immediately. So there's no real chance to build up any momentum. You're on the buy. And then they have a pretty long stretch. So they've got uh, the Waratahs and the Sunwolves at home. Then they get their tour out of the way, so Australia and New Zealand, and then they play the Bulls and Stormers at home. So it's an eight-game stretch. South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, back to South Africa. Eight games on the trot, um, no buy. So, yeah, uh, not an ideal um, setup for me. But, yeah, there's definitely... There's definitely room for improvement on last season. I think if the Sharks can keep all those home, can make um, Kings Park a fortress, if they can win all their home games, improve on last year, pick up uh, a win or two that they didn't pick up last year on the road, like that result against the Reds they lost last year, they probably, that's the kind of result you need to be getting. Um, so if they can do that and get a home quarterfinal, I think they could be hard to beat. If they're away, I think they might struggle. Although, in saying that, they almost got the, the Lions away last season. But still, I think home advantage for the Sharks will be will be hard to overcome if they can get it. And with the Lions having changes in, in coaching staff, there's a chance there for them, or the Stormers, to, to try and jump up the ranks in the South African Conference. So... Mm. Uh, expectations I think you definitely have to make the playoffs um, ideally you win the South African Conference you make the playoffs it's a pass you win the South African Conference cool you get your A uh, if they miss the playoffs then no big time fail so we'll see if this can be the Sharks year they've run up been runner up a few times four a lot um, so we'll see if this can finally be there. Yeah, see if uh, Robert Dupree's, um Well, just it seems like everybody recently wants to play running rugby. They think it's the only way to win. He's one guy going against the grain. So we'll see if he is able to do it. Right, that's it for me. And we will have a look at another one next time. But for now, see you guys next time.